So we are reading from the Vilak Sumanjari from Surya Silva Paragunata Swami, verse 79. O Subhagamuki, fair faced girl, when will you give me great joy singing sweet love songs with the Prince of Raja while you embrace him with your very graceful arms and he holds his strong arm on your low shoulders? O Subhaga Mukhi, fair-faced girl, when will you give me great joy singing sweet love songs with the Prince of Raja while you embrace him with your very graceful arms and he holds his strong arm on your low shoulders? <clears throat> Explanations. In his transcendental visions, Sri Raghunathas constantly experiences the sweetness of the divine couple. There are no words to express his experience, but he tries as good as he can. The sweetness of God cannot be explained by writing books. Therefore, the writers of the scriptures call it Mukha Savanavat. A dumb person can relish sweet mellows and can feel great ecstasy because of it, but he cannot express it with words. Actually, it is very difficult to explain with words because it is a deep feeling especially this Vilapa Kusumanjali is about the inner bhajan of Srila Raghunathas Goswami in his Svarupavesh what he is experienced in the spiritual world his seva what he is seeing and this is sometimes very difficult to put in words, to describe. The same goes for God's sweetness. Although the great saints who personally experience God's sweetness try to express themselves somehow in their books. One must ultimately practice bhajan in order to see it for oneself. Well, this is a very essential point here. Without practicing bhajan, we cannot get to it, we cannot relish it, we have no access. To this, then it may seem for us like ordinary stories or theater or something, how to say, mundane, mundane historical thing. Only the one who practices bhajan gets access to this world because by practicing bhajan, by hearing and chanting and remembering, we get it to the feeling and we get access to this world that we are also part of, not with this material body, but with our spiritual body. And especially we who are in the Madhurya Ras, as maidservants of Srimati Radharani, we have a female body as a maidservant of Srimati Radharani and only like that we have access to the Kunja and we can enter into the Leela. 
and each and every one of us has also his her particular seva within the kunja. So the thing is that without practicing with the favorable meditation within our practice, it is difficult to get access to this. But for us and everyone who is practicing, so we can get the feeling, especially when we are reading this in the League of Devotees, when we are together reading and sharing, everyone is giving his or her feeling to this, so we get more and more access and we can feel it too. What do you think, generally? Yes, sure. Yes. I think Bajan, good day with this. You, good day is stressing how to be one pointed in a Swarupa, in a, in, in a relationship with Ishta Deva, Ishta Devi. And then just one pointedness also coming from Suru Bajan. Also, every daily work, we have to do so-called physical work. Some, you know, we have to work in the office. Sometimes we have to take care of family member. And all these things also uh, should be one-pointed. We are spirit soul. Actually, we are Swarupa. We are Radha Dasi. So in this consciousness, <coughs> uh, we try to do this also one kind of bhajan. And Guru Dev suggesting 24-7, <coughs> uh, our conscience should be one-pointed. And uh, especially, we don't need to check others. We, we, we have to check myself. This is my homework. <laughs> I also try to be fit myself here in Vindavan with the help of other devotees, other Rashka devotees. So that is Guru Dev's main uh, teaching that I do. Thank you. One point I also want to add that I have heard since I am here now more often from Guru Dev. It's good to be a, a follower of Sri Guru. But we cannot rely that Sri Guru will do everything for myself. You cannot do my bhajan, my meditation. I have to endeavor for that. And he said that we cannot keep Sri Guru's picture on the altar like a dog. <laughs> giving a biscuit once in a while and hope that yeah you will do it for me not would it i love you so much and uh, of course we need the mercy and shila naratam das Thakur, in his prema bhakti chandrika there are so many verses where he is explaining how the mercy of shiguru is actually the only way to be able to do bhaja so that seems to be a contradiction but Guru Dev has also explained this many times when he said that Guru is not the goal. He said Radha Mohan is the goal and Sri Guru is showing us the way to the goal. And he's leading us to the goal and correcting us, helping us. But the endeavor has to come from ourselves. We have to have the desire to reach the goal and be ready to give everything to reach the goal. Because the mercy is always there, but actually we are not ready to take the mercy because our mind is still going here and there, ping pong, as Sri Gurudev likes to say. So to fixing the mind, it is very important that we are practicing both things, hearing and chanting and lila smaranami. We cannot practice one without the other. If we do so, then our mind cannot be steady. To make the mind steady, we have to practice both. One is going with the other. So this is a, like a training. 
And all these nice scriptures who we are reading, Srila Raghunatha Swami gives us the perfect example how to practice bhajan. And all our Guru Parampara, all our Acharyas and our beloved Gurudev, they give us the example how to live and how to follow so that we can ultimately reach the goal, namely Radha Dasya. That is at least my understanding. Yeah, anybody else? Taun Baba, who wants to add on this? Let us hear your sweet voices. Yes, <laughs> yes, Taun Baba. Yeah, this is a very, very, very important point Suniti was making. Lip, lip service is not is not Raganuga Bhakti, but we all, we all know this. We all are in the age of Kali, the age of hypocrisy. I can say for myself, more often than not, I'm a hypocrite. But Suniti makes a very, very deep point. Guru Seva doesn't mean lip service. Guru Seva means what Srila Sadhu Maharaj is saying, love in action. So we try to do this, like Jayananda Maharaj said, we try to do this also in our daily life. When we, when, we, when we deal with the jivas, when we deal with our job, our parents, our relatives, and so on and so forth. So, Srila Rupa Goswami in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, he says that what this Guru Padashraya, what, what is it actually meaning? Is it, is it not, it's not just, you know, I say, okay, I bow down to Gurudev, but I, actually I, I do this with a feeling. And uh, today I was reading in the morning the songs of Bhakti Nautakur, um, Gurudev Kripa Bindu Dio Koro Mori Dasi. This song is, is so wonderful. I highly recommend everyone to read this verse on a regular, uh, this song on a, on a regular basis because I love verse number three and four where this lip service is out of the window where Bhakti Nautakur is saying, Shakti Buddhihina Ami Atidina. I have no strength. I have no power, but I try to persist in doing my activities and I depend on your lotus feet. Please make me like you. Make me like you are so we can. And this is not, this cannot happen if we only do lip service. We cannot become, like Suniti said, like Gurudev, if we only say it and say it and say it. We have to do it. And uh, this, like uh, Pranavalava said, every one of us is flying our own aeroplane. Every one of us is in our own boat of bhajan. And so together, like, you know, like a streichholz, like, you know, uh, what is it called in English? when match, you a match. Match. Yes, if you have one match, the match easily breaks. But if you have five, six, seven, ten, twenty matches, you cannot break this match. That means Sadhu Sangha, even in the material world, they know that. So therefore, we come together as often as possible and we relish the Sangha. So then we can go away from the lip service of Guru Seva to the, to the bodily and, and mind. And everything should be there in this, in this mood that Gurudev gave me everything. I have to remember myself every day. I'm such a huge mm -hmm. rascal. Baba gave me everything and I have to do more. So I kick myself in my butt every morning. And this is what we have to do that we can really understand what we actually have in front of ourselves. It's not just something. It's the highest and most precious gift. And thank you, Suniti, for saying this thing that we should. Um, and Gurudev is always saying this. We should. Gurudev is not the main goal. That is right. But nevertheless, he is the main goal in achieving the main goal. <laughs> so he is, he is the main point. Our focus on the lotus feet of Gurudev will bring us. He will bring us to our goal. He is the navigator. He will bring us there. And if we love him, we uh, Radhika is very, very pleased. Jai Ho. Yeah. Jai Radha. Uh, Jai Radha. Jai Ho. So this is a very nice point, Tarun Baba. Gurudev is leading us to the goal. That means there is no question of being independent at any time. 
Even if we are in the Kunja, we are depending on our Guru Manjari. Like she is giving us the Seva in the Kunja, and Guru Dev is giving us the Seva here in this world. This is what, you know, you're touching a very sensitive point. This is what actually Anukatya means. This is what th this means. Anukatya means constant shelter. Constant, constantly we take shelter. When our Gurudev is here, very nice. When our Gurudev is left this planet, we have to focus on another frequency. We have to elevate our consciousness to follow him in his Guru Manjari form. So Anukatya is here. Anukatya is there. So, so Naratan Das Thakur is saying what you practice here will be the result there. But nothing here and nothing there is out of Anukatya. This Anu is a very, very cool little, little two syllables, Anu. But it means following forever. It is eternal. So it's very deep. If we meditate on that point, on Anukatya, it's a very beautiful meditation. Wow. Thank you. Although the great saints who personally experienced God's sweetness tried to express themselves somehow in their books, one must ultimately practice bhajan in order to see it for oneself. It is not possible to get full savor and experience of this simply by reading books. Therefore, Srila Rupa Goswami has defined <laughs> the means to relish rasa in his Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, verse 6 to 7. From chapter 2. Those who are completely washed of all material contamination by their pure devotion, whose hearts are brightened by spiritual satisfaction, who are very attached to hearing the holy topics of Srimad Bhagavata, who enjoy the blissful company of Rasika saints, whose very life is the blissful wealth of devotion to Govinda's feet, who always discharge the confidential duties of love, like Harinam Sankirtan, associating with Rasika saints, hearing transcendental topics from them, and remembering these topics throughout the day, are qualified to relish Bhagavat Rasa, the flavor of God. So, Srila Rupa Goswami is mentioning very clearly here duties of love like Harinam Sankirtan means Sangha Kirtan, Sadhu Sangha, coming together and chanting the holy name. It's a very powerful thing to cleaning out our heart from all the unwanted things that are there, from all our anarthas, slowly but surely will be cleared out so that our heart becomes like butter and love can come in. This is actually the recommended process for this age of Kali. It is the Yuga Dharma. Therefore, the Goswamis and our Acharyas are always stressing on this point. And this is what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu brought to us. The practice to get Prema in Kali Yuga is this Harinam Sankirtan coming together and then also our Nam Japa chanting. Here, Sri Goswami clearly mentions what we were discussing before 
hearing and chanting and Leela Smarana. This should be practiced. When you when you were reading the verse, I was immediately I was immediately thinking, well, now you can play devil's advocate and you can say, what? <laughs> Raghunath Goswami is asking, when will you give me great joy? So every one of us knows that this should, this, this, how can this be? That the Manjari, a fully perfect Manjari like Rati or Tulsi Manjari is asking Swamini, when will you give me great joy? So one can easily now think, how is this possible? So the mantras are, are not selfless or what? So Baba, I think Baba later on, he will explain what that means. Even this sentence, when will you give me great joy, is actually a speech of pure selflessness because she wants to hear the songs. We want to hear songs about so many subject matters, but here the mantra, she will only... She only desires the happiness of the divine couple. They, she only desires what 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 uh, what seva can she do? And singing the songs is only about the divine couple. So the joy the manchi ex, the manchari experience is not. If we ask, please give me. When will you give me great joy? That means when the the, the purusha uh, this this consciousness is completely not there in the manchari. She only desires. Uh, something, the happiness of the divine couple. So it's actually not selfish, but most selfless because she only wants to hear songs about Radha and Krishna so that she can be immediately ready to serve. I think Baba later on will explain this, but this was popping up in my head immediately when I heard this, when will you give me great joy? So sometimes the Acharyas, they also are very playful so that our minds can understand that that there is something very much deeper going on here. Yeah, I feel also it's kind of like a hint because we just read that when Raghunath Das Goswami is in his identity of Tulsi Manjari, then he completely it's difficult for him to express how he is feeling, how she is feeling. But actually, by saying, when will you give me great joy, he is trying to express how much happiness is in the service of Shimati Radhika. It's, but it's not the, the, the reason why, why she is doing it. She wants to make her happy, but because... That is such a deep relationship between the the Dasi and Answamini that this joy is just like overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And so I think also in my little endeavors to to do, then I also I feel inspired when he says or she says, when will you give me great joy? Because the joy is the service, the Seva Ras. Mm. That is the joy of a manjari. That means, uh, when can I give? When can you give me your intimate service? And then I could taste this seva rasa, this ananda, lasa, and uh, mahababa together become Ananda. This Ananda Baba is mentioned. Yes. So we need, we we hunger for the seva of our Swami. That is our Sadaka Deha. Strong, they should be strong desire. Hunger for Radha. Mm -hmm. Sri Raghunathas Goswami's heart is suffering the pain of love and separation. Separation from Sriman Mahaprabhu, separation from Rupa and Sanatan Goswami, and within himself he feels a great want of his Swaminiji. His body is burning in the forest fire of separation. 
And he anxiously prays, when will you make me happy? What is the happiness of Radhika's maid servants? Not their own satisfaction, but the happiness of the Yuga Kishora. While Sri Raghunath floats on the waves of prayer that are heightened by the pain of separation, the picture of another transcendental pastime appears to him. Swamini and her Nagara are approaching him, singing sweet songs with each other on the bank of Sri Radhakund. Swamini places her lovely arm on the shoulder of Gosta Yuvaraj. Krishna, the prince of the meadows, embracing him. Swamini's arm is elegant because of her pure love, not just because of her physical beauty. Hari cannot be subdued with mere physical beauty without love. In Lalita Madhava, Act 5, it is described how Garuda was enchanted by Rukmini's beauty prior to her abduction by Sri Krishna. When the Devas churned the milk ocean, they also churned the ocean of beauty and took the beautiful nature Lakshmi Devi, the goddess of fortune, from there. Aho! This princess is astonishing my eyes with her beauty in such a way that the beauty of Lakshmi Devi cannot impress me anymore. But when Krishna heard Karuda's words, he said, Sake bhavatu kim etena rupa matrena nahariya hari. Oh friend, let it be. What's the use of your description? Hari is not just enchanted by physical beauty. Unless that beauty is made out of love, it won't be able to enchant me. Therefore, say something about her love for me. <clears throat> Swaminiji's arms consists of Mahabhav. That's why they are so lovely. Swamini's right arm goes over Shyama's back up to his right abdomen. And Shyama places his long left arm over her left shoulder and makes his left hand reach as far as her left breast. How many hundreds of desires arise in Shyama's heart after Swamini touches him with her elegant, loving arms. Shamasundara's arms are strong, unlimitedly, unlimitedly strong, and this beauty becomes very beautiful when they are engaged in Swamini's service. When Radha and Krishna embrace each other, they begin to sing sweet love songs in an intoxicated state. They relish the beauty of the forest on the bank of Sri Radha Kund, where the trees and vines are full of blooming flowers that are surrounded by bees that are thirsty after their honey, where the deer and hearts freely play where the cuckoos, parrots, and cranes are sweetly singing, and where the air is filled with the rich fragrance of the blooming lotus, <coughs> kalara, and champaka flowers. 
Radha and Krishna themselves illuminate his shore with their own golden and bluish effulgence. Madayatiti Madana, Cupid intoxicates and love songs, Madanadana are also intoxicating songs. Swamini presses Shyama's right abdomen with her right lotus hand to tap the rhythm. Whatever gap there was between their bodies disappear now that they firmly embrace each other. How much Swamini enjoys. This is narrated by Ananda Gopal Goswami. He sings, Ebuka Chiriya Yekane Parana Sekane Tomare Tobu. I will, I will tear open my chest where my heart is, and I will put you there. Chiyama also taps the rhythm on Swamini's bosom. Swamini feels the strength of Shama's arm. Rasamaya Shama and Rasamaya Swamini. Sometimes Swamini keeps her head on Shama's chest and sings. Shyama, oh friend, you are my life. I cannot forget that blessed day that I met you. When I saw your moon-like face, I could not stay calm anymore. The heart of this unfortunate girl etches. I'm dying ten times in half an hour. O Kanu, Krishna, listen, you are my very life. Be kind to me. Give me the shade of your lotus feet. I have made my reputation and my family tradition sink in the water of love. I cannot live without you. How beautiful is Swamini's face when she sings his sweet love song. How wonderful are her gestures. That's why Tulasi calls her Subhadha Mukhi, fair-faced girl. Here, Shyama also sings an appropriate love song. <clears throat> oh, beautiful girl, what are you telling me? I have become absorbed in remembering your love again and again. My mind never finds peace. It is always agitated, and I can find no consolation. I always see you everywhere, in all ten directions, in the sky as well as on earth. I wander over the hills and the rivers and through the forest, just looking for you. I don't think of anyone else but you. You appear in my mind even when I eat or sleep. Listen, O Vinodini, giver of joy, to this love story. We are two bodies with one soul. Yanadasa sings. Gone is the duality between them as they have now united. So beautiful. The whole description is actually everything that a maidservant is praying for, and that's why she wants to exist, to bring them together, to hear them 
sing the love songs to each other. And I remember when we had this verse, we heard this verse and also Gurudev's explanation. Mm -hmm. He said, this explanation is the meaning of the Mahamantra we are chanting. Mm -hmm. So in this meditation, to go into Mahamantra with this meditation is very powerful. We can uh, envision them, how they are standing there and dancing with each other, holding each other's uh, arms around each other and praising each other, their love and their feelings, expressing how they are so eager for each other. And that is everything that a, a maidservant ever dreams of. She has no higher uh, dreams than bringing them together and let them become one. Because they are eternally one and they are playing in the beautiful forest of Vrindavan to always meet and to always become one in their love for each other. So that is a very, very beautiful topic. And in our Mahamantra, as we have heard so many times, also from our dear Gurudev, the Hare is Shrimati Radhika embracing Krishna. And Krishna is embracing Shrimati Radhika. And they are both very much astonished how this beautiful embrace is taking place and what they feel in their embrace, how much they have, how many desires they have to please each other in that divine embrace. And I remember, Gurudev, the last time when we had an initiation, you said, you explained this, how to meditate Mahamantra in these feelings of them embracing each other, of them meeting each other, and then calling the mantras in this service, in these circumstances, to keep these circumstances repeating again and again and again, and to remind them, you know, what is the glories of their meeting and of their love for each other. That is actually the Sevaras of the Dasis. And when they do this, they are so happy beyond anything that anyone could express because they become you know, they become so, so happy that they can bring them together. It is even difficult to express it in words, but we can chant in this way by having these pictures in our minds. When we read Vilaka Kushmanjali, it is so romantic. We are at Radhakund. At Radhakund, there is no demons, no opposition. They have just a beautiful time together and they just can share their love without any fear. And uh, it becomes a very high uh, experience for both of them because then they can again become one person in their divine embrace and invite all of us to also, you know, start to meditate in this way and sing and dance in this virtual realm in a way that can be very difficult to explain here in this in this 3D world. And so that I like very much when I heard this from Gurudev that he said, this is actually Mahamantra, what is going on? And this one devotee got the initiation and Gurudev explained this in a very heart touching way with so many feelings. And he said, so if you meditate on Mahamantra with this feeling, with that picture, with that desire, with that heartfelt uh, feelings, <laughs> more and more, then I will give you Diksha Mantras. So I love this verse so much. And I was so lucky 
that good for sharing on this because like if I read it, I never get this depth. No? Also, usually it takes the time. But Gurudev is giving this hint. Think about it in this way. You know, see Maha Mantra. They are meeting, they are embracing, they are dancing at Radha Kund. There are so many different, different ways how it can happen. But the point is always that they become so attracted to each other with no fears and the maid servants can arrange it and we can serve it if we can uh, even chant only maybe you know not so many quality of you know my, I mean quantity of rounds just to chant but to go into these pictures to go into these feelings what we have heard then uh, I would consider myself very lucky to get these blessings and this more intense desire that the Maha Mantra becomes alive. Beautiful. Yeah, beautiful, very beautiful, the thing you did explain very beautifully because we are supposed to be one pointed, Stai Baba for, for, for Manjari Baba, Radha Dati Baba. Then, when we chanting, as we chanting as Dashi Baba, or we are not, we are chanting just to, uh, unconsciously, mm -hmm. or uh, we are we chanting, thinking something else, material thing about job, about family, about money, etc. So I feel if we could chant one point of this chanting in this mood, this is Sai Baba. But uh, we have a tendency to, to our mind is go, go, go away from this consciousness. So this Guru Deva reminded us this should be concentrate, uh, <coughs> stay in Sai Baba. That is, I feel, and this is our homework. So, thank you very much. No, I just thank Gurudev that he opened, that he revealed this to us. And I am also not so advanced in this, but I, I know this is the right way. And we have these verses, we can read them again, we can hear. Even if I forget all the time, but when I read it, then I, I remember, mm -hmm. oh my God, Gurudev said this. Ah, you know, and the feeling comes back because. Why are we in Vrindavan? We are getting some skadas. We are getting some in impression in the heart to take home and to grow these feelings. You know, today, today Gurudev is talking with one devotee, and uh, I'm happening uh, to, to be there. And uh, Guru Dev saying, without studying Radha Rasa Sinaniji, we cannot understand, uh, we cannot establish Radha uh, Nishta, without Guru Dev saying. And then without, without studying, without reading Pirapaks Manjari, We cannot be good. We cannot be, you know, say, style battle. Guru was very, Guru Dev is very, very strongly saying yeah. that, that person who does not touch this one cannot be good. And also can this kaput. 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 <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so that means how important to, to, to read and Hearing and reading and meditating this Pirapaks Manjari. That's, you know, again, remind us, you know, we are, we are, we are just to, you know, this is, we thinking this, this hearing this Pirapaks is, is ordinary, but actually is not at all ordinary. This is very rare opportunity, especially with, you know, Associating Rashka Vaishnava and with Guru Dev is a very, very rare opportunity. So, uh, just to, 
here also, we could understand that what is the importance of this Vita Patsumanipur. This is a very nice point, Jananda. This, what we have here, this is a really the golden opportunity that we have in our life. Because after this life, we don't know to which universe we've been transferred to. So the opportunity is now. And we should take advantage of it now and not think maybe next year, next week, maybe later. We have got already all this nice Sangha, knowing all the devotees and the Gautya Vaishnava culture. Actually, this is the culture we should embrace and making it part of our life. Because even as devotees, we don't know how much time that we have. 50, 60 years, maybe, we don't know. So no, the, maybe 10 or 20. Maybe no. 10 or 20. Yeah. I mean, you become 50 or 60. Yeah, in like, a general way when you are young, but now yeah. us, we are now <laughs> yeah. 60. Yeah, so time is very short. And time <laughs> is eating all up. Kala is eating everything up. And the illusion is that we think that everything will remain as it is forever. This is the illusion of this world. We don't say that this world doesn't exist. It exists. Everything is real, but it is temporary. And what we want to identify with our eternal spiritual body, this is our constitutional position. As Srila Prabhupada clearly says in the introduction of Bhagavad Gita, Swarup and Swarup Siddhi. Swarup means form, and Siddhi means eternal. And that is our constitutional position, where we are supposed to be. Because our Radha Mohan, our Gurudev, they want all of us, they want all of our sevas. Like we are individual spiritual souls, we have an individual identity and our individual services. So they want everyone, everything. Our Swamini wants us all. So we all should come as much as possible to this Vrindavan Dham and take advantage of it. And from this beautiful Gaudiya Vaishnava culture. I think those who are very advanced, more advanced than myself, and this is most of the devotees, they they have this inner connection with Gurudev. But personally, <clears throat> I'm not so good at this, so I need to come here to always feel my relationship to Gurudev on the spiritual level. And I want to also say one thing, because sometimes people think, oh, this is so negative that we say, oh, we have not much time left. But that is a that is a feeling of greed or a feeling of dedication. Yes, because the, this yeah. is the reason because I mentioned it. But on the other hand, everyone who has a pure heart, like Srila Prabhupada said, they can become Krishna conscious in a second. If there is this <laughs> intensity, <laughs> if there is this strong desire, it is also at the same time possible to have everything in a, you know, let's say, a fountain of mercy. Yeah. Is it true? It's both true. It's both true, yeah. Shri Prabhupada said, you can decide at every moment. And today, Guru then said to us, um, if we become Swarupa, Swarupa and Swarupa Siddhi, even one person, only one person. Only one person who attains Swarupa and Swarupa City among the his disciples is, is successful, his mission is successful. Like a Prabhupada also mentioned in, I don't know, Gita or Next of Devotion, if I could make one pure devotee, then my mission is successful. So at that time, I could not understand what talking about the Prabhupada, you know, what's the meaning of pure devotee? Then later we understand, oh, pure devotee means who could attain Swarupa and Swarupa city. So this is uh, 
uh, Guru Dev also today was saying to, you know, some of devotees in you know, my world. So we try to be, uh, hankering this Swarupa and the Swarupa city. And also Guru Dev today mentioned, uh, we don't need to talk too much, just uh, very simple. To, you know, Swarupa and Swarupa city. It, we, we just try to be Stai Baba in this Sadaka Deha and, and, and Sita Deha. You, you don't need to complicate it. Just simple, you know? So, I, I want to practice. Anybody would like to share? I mean, we got, we got so a little bit excited here. That's also nice here. Of Gurudev. Gurudev was in his room. He heard, he said he will uh, listen. Gurudev, would you like to enlighten us so we can also become sky bath and full of feelings for Swamini? And for Mahamantra. Is it a question? To to read it, it's a game. Sweet and slow. Who? Who? Said the. Yes. The story. Yeah, you can, you can say. But it was one minute again, one minute before. Could we read it again slowly, slowly, very slowly? Uh, I think, I think when, when, I think it is very, very important um, we all come from different backgrounds and what Suniti was was referring to the meditation when we do the Nam Chapa. I was thinking about this and uh, for a very long time and you know we all came to the we all came many of us came uh, via ISKCON or Gaudi Amat and the most important thing for me personally was to to understand that actually we have to chant with a sense of relationship. So I was chanting very long time. So Nidhi, we were all chanting and chanting and chanting, but at least I can speak for myself during my years when I was there. Um, I'm very thankful for all the experiences, but I was not chanting with a, with a sense of relationship. Who am I? I was just chanting as a bhakta and then as initiated devotee but the one thing which which is very very important and when we do nam chapa when we are chanting the holy name we should do it with identification with abhiman we should sit down and we should not in the beginning of course we think okay tarun govinda is now sitting down and he's doing bhajan at one point we have to switch and we have to get in the emotion that actually we are chanting the Nam with a relationship to Swamini and to Krishna in our own Swarupa. So this chant, there is chanting without identification, which is beneficial, but most beneficial is chanting with identification, that we know who I want to be, those who got Siddha Pranali anyway know who they are, and those who have not uh, received Siddha Pranali, they should fix up the mind and should sit down and think, who am I? What what am I? Who what is my service? And I chant with this. I have to chant with this feeling of belonging to a huge family of manjaris. So this is very very much more beneficial than just to chant in the jiva consciousness. So Gurudev always saying we have to get out from the soul consciousness, and we have to chant with this abhiman 
that I am a, a maid servant of Swamini. So I found this very much more beneficial than just sit down and chant the holy name, go into the emotions of the holy name without feeling any belonging, without any relationship. So this is a very, for me, this was a very important point when I when I came into contact with my Gurudev and with Sadhu Maharaj, that this this Abhiman, this who I am, it should be, it should start when we sit down in the morning and do bhajan. We have to conquer our idiot rascal mind that we are someone else. We are not this this bones and and flesh sitting down, but actually we have someone inside waiting to come up and waiting to be realized. Like uh, Jainanda Maharaj said, attaining Swarupa Siddhi means that we finally understand who we really are. But if we start, we don't start with such a belonging. If we don't start with such an identification, it will take a very, very long time. And Raganuga Bhakti is all about relationship. So when we do our Nam Chapa, which is the most important item, we should always try to, like the monkeys, the, the mind is a monkey, we should always try to bring back the mind and say to him, this is me. I am this. This is my Stai Bhav. You shut up and we chant now nicely in this identification. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, there is no possibility of advancement if we have no feeling of, of identification. This was for me very important. Wow, very beautiful. Very nicely explained. Give me your blessing, Sahun Baba. Yes, give, yes give, give us. I am just, I am just preaching to my mind. I am just preaching to how <laughs> You are sitting Just in Vrindavan. How, how can I give? <laughs> it's your job to give us the blessings. You are sitting in Vrindavan. I'm sitting here on my fat. But I have, you know, I have, I can, I can only uh, touch your feet and pray because this is my preaching to my mind. This is a job I have to do every day to convince myself that I'm not sitting down and I'm just mechanically rattle, rattle, rattle the nam, but this identification at least theoretically it comes fake it until you make it you know so i am in the fake it stage and one day by your blessings i'm going to make it so you have to give me blessings <laughs> i think now i'm is giving up i want to say goodbye no? six o'clock she says the text six so today our dear Maharani is leaving Vrindavan. She had to go home today. She's leaving at six o'clock, means in 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. So please forgive us if we just, uh, if there's not like a very, very important question or desire to express something. 